What I'm seeing, actually, you see, I mean, it's a combination of As an expert of in the, the various martial arts in China, what did you think of the fighting that you saw in the but movies? Martial art has a very, very deep meaning. If we are about to deal with a man, if we take his hand... Lyosha, relax your hand. This hand is unsteady, and whatever I do with this hand, I couldn't do anything, as you can see. I have to make it strained to do something with it and to control my opponent's body. You see? Once the electrical circuit is closed, the opponent falls himself without any problem. He just falls to the ground. No matter how big and strong the enemy is, the more his strength, the faster he will fall on the floor. The same happened if he just hit me with his fist, but the knife. Mechanical conversions of his hand and strike will be the same. The movement is extension, only the logical model will be different. So he just hits me. In such position, if I somehow turn his construction into United Electrical Circuit, for example, this way, he will just lose his balance. But if I will continue to press down, look, and then I'll start to go towards him, he will fall down. What happened? Here is a nerve impulse. I don't use any points of tenderness. I just press hair between the muscles. See what happens with him. It makes him strained. I don't want to use this movement to bring him down. It's impossible. He is big. But I want him to get strained so he'd become a unified construction. And once I did it, I can do whatever I want with him and he will fall down. You see? There are things that need to be understood. Well, what else is important in knife fight? We'll take a knife, for example, like this one. Let's imagine that he has a dagger in his hand. Lyosha will stand in the beginning and will about to attack me. Notice his legs position and vectorial force directs in a certain way. If we follow it, we will get the spear. Now imagine that the person will throw the spear in this position. Could he do that? No. The maximum he will succeed is just to straighten his arm. He won't be able to stab with all his strength. All his order to stab me, he needs to change his leg stand. So you can beat him while he will be changing his leg stand, because in this moment he is helpless, he cannot do two things at once. Let's imagine that Losha decided to stab me again. I notice out of hand's position that it's gonna be a sword, it's gonna be a poking sword strike. This is the second logical model. There are three logical models. A spear in the hands like this, a spear like this, and a short sword in the hands. Now he is ready to strike with the sword. See, he put his finger here, like on a hump, so it is very convenient for him to kill me. But in order to strike with the sword, legs have to be in a corresponding stand. 
Look what I'm going to do now. See, he is about to strike me. I understand that the point of a fourth application is here. And we remember from the theoretical mechanics and neurophysiology that any biomechanical system predicts the next point. That is, he chose the point of a fourth application and I just take a step aside. Accordingly to it, the point of a fourth application moved here and he will have to change leg stand. And then he changes it. See what happened. Now he must find a fulcrum in order to not to fall. Now look. Here we go. And he is on the floor. Once again. Now he will grab a knife in another way. I notice that it's a spear. What will I do? I'll step aside once he start moving towards me. Now he will turn around and look what happened. You see? Where does the hand point? Over there. Now here we go a strike and he is on the floor. Look, I beat him with feet alone. I didn't use my hands yet. Come on, boy. He is up. Come on. See? One, two, three, four. See? Now he will turn around. While he is doing it, I press a little and he is on the floor again. Notice that I don't use my hands and technical elements. I just unbalance him. Once again. Follow the legs. They are moving towards the enemy. That is, the movement has to be run onto a knife. He turns it at once and wants to strike. See? One. Withdraw your hand. Strike. Come on! You see? Miss again. Withdraw your hand. While he is doing it, strike. I had to strike him in the neck, but I ducked and stroke in the chest. But of course, you can strike in the neck. Then you can beat out the Adam's apple. Then I continue to work with my legs. Come on! I'm going back, forward. Look, he wants to strike. See? Op, 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 op. What I am about to say. First, I would give a person a theoretical concept that attack should be accomplished while your opponent changed the stand. I teach him how to move legs against a knife, without technical elements for the time being, which would be helpful to me. The first thing a person should start from is to understand the simple things I was explaining. That is to go in different directions, be like a pendulum. See? Op, 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 op. See, we took the center line from him again. Come on! Sometimes other things happen. You go directly on the knife and see what happened. You see where he is? Can be stop me in this position? Yes, if I don't insert my hand. But I did. What he will do now? He will draw back. In the meantime, he will draw back. I make him dropped already. I will just not let him to step back. That's the first thing I'd start from. I'd explain how to walk on the feet properly. 
Then I would explain how unbalance a person. For example, he will go with a head strike. Look, one, look, see, he went hard. I could hit him already here, but I didn't do that. I start to drag him in different ways, showing imbalancing. I mean, I'm learning how to unbalance an opponent without causing him any harm. Then strike a foreign on the chest. Op. Come on, one more time. Op. Once again, a foin on the chest. Op, op, op. Op, 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 why we learn it? In order to control the enemy's body. The things I'm showing now are training stuff. In real fight it happens more quickly and strikes are fatal. So the first thing is a theory then we learn how to walk on feet in a proper way, and then we learn how to unbalance a person. Next, strikes are different. For example, there is a step like that. Look what happens. Come on, step. See the next step. So the question that could be discussed is, what should I work with? I can work with a knife, with the hand, with the whole biomechanics construction, and I can work with something that's invisible, that's behind this biological construction. So here we go with four tires. When he cuts me like that, I can work with the very blade. For example, cut me. I'm going off the blade. I don't want it to cut me flesh. Once again, now I'm blocking a hand. I work with the hand. Next, another strike and see. Now I work with the whole body. All his body went another direction. And I can work with one that is behind it, with invisible things. For example, come on, forward. Here is the work with invisible things. That is, you can move away from the blade, you can block the hand, you can turn around the whole body, and you can work with invisible things. It is important to understand that first we should learn is how to deal with a knife. What I was talking about. Going off the blade using your legs. Then you should learn how to work with an opponent's hand. How to reflect his punches. Then do the same with the whole body. Like this. For example, at once. And only then we'd learn how to work with invisible things, when we go against each other and then... You see? And when you will understand all the things, we can move on to the next step to geometric constructions. What is geometric construction? When someone took out a knife, you need to understand something. 
So he took out a knife and holds it. The first thing you would preferably do is to take your hands away, because smart people will attack the nearest point of defeat. So he will try to cut your hands. So when you stand at the beginning, he immediately begins to cut your hands. Therefore, you take your hands away from here. For example, here, here, or over here. Depends on what we will do. We must understand that we need to learn how to rotate on uncles, to not give the possibility to trust us as if we were a column. Here he strikes, and I'm going off the strike, turning around. Here we go, the rotating column that makes it hard to hit. Try to hit a rotating column. You will fail. Then you need to understand that strikes can be like that. In order to do this, we'd learn how to manage a diagonal. Here is a strike cutting the throat like in a Russian criminal tradition. We must learn how to go off from these attacks and come closer to the opponent. You need to take the geometric forms that would eliminate possibility of opponent's destruction. Once again, strike, once again, strike, shield. Depending on what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna work either with a blade or I can bounce back from it. But most importantly, I should take my hands away. So he wants to cut me, but I bounced back and my hands is here already. Now I can trick him. See, where he concentrates his attention right now. Exactly, on my hands. So we can beat his legs. His knife is frozen, so I could pick it up and attack him. But the essence of what I am talking about right now is that you can create different geometric shapes that will make you unharmed. It may seem for someone that what I am demonstrating right now, such as the noblest fighting system, is gentle and kind. But it's not like that. I just don't beat him. Why should I beat my people? I mean, if it was the enemy, the blow had struck hair but hair. If it was the enemy, the strikes would be following like that, like that, and like that. With glows, straight elbows, I mean the strikes would have been for effect. And once we understood geometric constructions, that allows us to go off the strike, I have to involve my hands. And in order to do this, I'd understand the tires of defense and attack. More often that opponent keeps knife somewhere in the pocket. So the first thing I teach her is to switch his attention to a knife. You remember that person cannot do two things at once. Therefore, when he takes the knife out, we strike him. That is, I would first teach him to beat with his hands and feet.
Once the opponent wants to take out the knife, we'd give him a direct impact, for example in the leg. Then I would teach him to kick with the ancient Aryan kicks that break the opponent's legs very effective, as you know. That is, a person has a knife in his pocket, he wants to take it, he needs to put it out and open it. As he reaching for the knife, I kick him. And no one from the police station will not say a word, because when they come, the knife will be on the right side and the man on the left. His leg will be broken, and it won't make me any harm in all countries. After that, I would have taught him to beat with his hands using techniques that would cripple a man. It is important to learn while training how to do it in a particular moment of time. And due to what we do a strike, for example due to waves, or turning the body, or body weight. I mean how the effort is transmitted, how this mechanism transmitting effort looks like. Since hitting with the palm doesn't require a big effort, there will be some nuances. For example, strike accuracy is important, so we need to work on accuracy. Because the eye, for example, is a small thing, and it would be difficult to hit it while moving. Therefore, the enemy should be placed under the impact plane, without the possibility of withdrawal from the blow. He will have to either bury his head or put his hands. And if he has a knife in his hand, then you can only try to defend yourself with another hand. But if he will put this hand, it will be even better for us, since we would block this hand to a lock. And then we can continue to strike him until you put out his eye and break all his arms and legs. Next, when we are fighting against the knife, we should understand that the first action must be blocking. That is, I don't let him to get a knife or beat him. For example, if he stands close and tries to get a knife, I instantly block his hand and don't let him to do it. And at this time I can hit him with another hand. If I don't have the possibility to block by hands, for example, I stand far away, then I can kick or hit with my hands when he is getting out the knife. If I cannot do it, for example, he is too far, and already took out a knife, then I have to fight with my hands. I understand that I need to remember the theory, be able to move on feet properly, choose a geometric shape without fail, remember a logical model of strikes. Altogether you need to analyze in one second. But if you know it all, you don't have to analyze anything. So you immediately see where he is going to strike. He has to turn a knife to strike somewhere else. So the first movement will be a turn of the knife. As soon as he turned, I step aside. And then I choose the proper construction that will allow me to solve this problem. So let's suppose he turns the knife to stab me. But I put a shield immediately. It's fisticuffs. So the shield is put. Now he will try to remove his hand from here in order to hit me again. Look, I put the shield and geometric shape is broken, so I just bringing him down and using his mass. But if it was fisticuffs, it would look a little different. Look, one, a shield, a sword, See what happened. I change his movements.
Ну, давай уже. Come on, strike. For example, let's consider a next track. Everything simple. The first thing is to block, to not let to work. Then he takes out his hand and I kick him. Now I work with the body. I worked with the hand before that. Now he needs to turn around, but I don't let him to do it. Now let's try with the stiletto. Here we go. I took my hands away and start to move. Up, 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 up. up. See, my hand prevents his strike. See. That's the hand prevents his to attack. Op. I hit him gently in his shoulder, but it still makes him a little unbalanced. Hand immediately hung from the hit. Come on. C1. If you think that it is unsettling, it's not like that. It is a strike and quite painful. His hand has just hung. If I taught someone, I would have taught him to fight barehanded against a sword, but knife in order to be sure that he could handle with a knife. Sword creates more problems. Why? It is longer. Therefore, no matter how far I went back, he will cut me in any event. No matter how I shift, he will reach me. So the only thing you can do in this situation is to move against your opponent. Don't go off the sword since it gets you anyway. You can move left, right and against your opponent. That's it. There are no other movement against sword and you can build the planes. For example, a backhand strike. He strikes me, I step back, worked with a sword, now he is going to beat back but I'm working with my body already. Now the diagonal strike from above and I go off from it. Now step back and put a shield immediately. I don't let him to strike. See? And as you might guess, I can fall him on the floor now. So when I taught a person to fight against the sword, I would ask two people to take knives and attack him at once. I would ask them to not stab him hard with wooden knives, but that he could get spatial skills on feet. I don't want him to think that he will be attacked by knife alone during his whole life. Knife could appear from any direction, so you will have to turn around, to spin on legs and go away from punches from different directions. After fighting with two opponents, he would have had a following group of questions. Then I would start teaching him tactics. That is, what will opponents do? I'd started teaching tactics from the next. First, I would learn what Wolf can offer as a knife fight. That is, what they teach in the practice of a knife fight. 
There are lots of knife fighting schools, so I'd start from it. How to fight against this type of enemy, against this one, etc. As well as I discuss different schools with you, karate, etc., different schools of bodyguards, sabotage units, the history of the attempted acts, and so on. I mean, at this stage tactics is very important. Since he already can do something, he knows how to move, how to turn the planes, how to block, how to control a distance, how to control a fulcrums. That is, when he knows it all, can work with Domna and knows everything I demonstrated before, so it's time to learn tactics. For example, where we will work, if it is a street, no need to think. Just grab a stone and your opponent with a knife is running away already. Or take a stick. The main thing is to have an advantage, so a person will refuse to attack with a knife. But what if there won't be such possibility? What if it happens in restaurant? Then it may be a fork, for example. I mean, how to turn anything into an improvised one. A chair, for example. How to fight against a knife with a chair? It has four chair legs. It must be shown how to manipulate the opponent's body with the help of a chair, how to turn it, what kind of techniques exist to make it real, what kind of theoretical mechanical actions condition it by one or another biomechanical systems actions. Then, when we pass through all nice fighting schools, we would start to learn that what can offer against a knife. For example, if the opponent has a knife in his hand, what will we do with him? What tactical elements we are gonna use? Why do we do this for? In order to be more professional and know your opponents by sight. To be able to determine, understand, etc. For example, a person stands like this, and it is obvious that he is a fighter. If he is a boxer, then how to fight against him? A boxer can take a knife being drunk. How it's set? We beat a punch bell and drink vodka. Different people react differently. For example, Eastern martial arts program include Tanto, Companion Sword, Katana. He may not know how to fight with a knife, but he has to. Of course, he won't carry a tentacle on the street, but if he had it in his backpack after workout, even the wooden one, he can strike with it hard. I saw how a person got struck with such a wooden sword, so his shoulder was swollen. He practiced kendo, so he got stroke with such sword while training. So, in any case, some of the martial arts program, such as Filipino, Japanese one, even Jiu-Jitsu, already include knife training. Also, it is necessary to note our special section of Sambo. Few people know what a special Sambo is. For all, Samba is like a sport martial art where opponents turn each other. Samba is a self-defense without weapons, and it can include many things related to the defense without weapons. So, if you meet a person who knows Samba well, I'd feel bad for you if you start to brandish a knife in front of him. He would break your hand and put it into your ass, so you'd never take a knife again. Or he will turn you upside down with all his street and throw you on the ground. So I would practice tactics with him more heartily. Then, when we passed everything, I would start to cultivate his decisiveness. I mean, he has mental locks anymore, but has no decisiveness yet. No decisiveness to demonstrate everything I told him, all the strikes, theory, etc. 
It's not going to work on the street if he has no decisiveness. Why I started with other things but decisiveness? A person has a mental block. He is afraid of that he doesn't know. Now, when he knows everything, he needs the decisiveness and strong wild qualities. He has to have a decisiveness to carry out the task to defeat the enemy with a knife. And there is a very important part that's left that will hinder us in real fight. It's a legal training. I should now explain a person some concepts such as self-defense, urgent self-defense, legally defined crime and work with him in this direction in a very serious way. And only when we are done with law and justice we can work on decisiveness. There are some special exercises. They are different. There are different training programs cultivating decisiveness. For example, tactical games, visiting unpleasant places, such as a morgue, or to be present at autopsy. There are special techniques that show to a person as top consequences, etc. That is, the whole program is built. After the decisiveness will be cultivated in him, you will have to gather everything you taught him all together. It has to be done in the following way. A technical system should be based on the foundation of law and all this has to turn around decisiveness. I think such system can make maestro with a knife a bit disappointed. What I'm seeing, actually, you see, I mean, it's a combination As an expert of in the, the various martial arts in China, what did you think of the fighting that you saw in the but movies? Martial art has a very, very deep meaning.